Hey everyone, this is Dan from DataNTV.com, XGool, and PayPal Data Scientist. In this video, we're going to go through an XGool table manipulation that takes a statistical concept um, and actually applies it in this form of um, table, table manipulation. This is the type of problem that you would often encounter if you are in a product data science interview, um, specifically like the SQL round, where you might be asked a question like, you know, how do you calculate the variance or the mean or even correlation coefficient uh, uh, based on the tables that are provided to you? Um, now, I just want to sort of give you a heads up saying that, you know, as I go through this video itself, um, it is like a raw format and um, at the same time I've been somewhat experiencing some cold the past few weeks or so definitely not COVID just because I've already been tested twice and it came out to be negative but I'm gonna cough here and there as I'm sort of talking so sort of bear with me as we go through this exercise together really this is really designed to help you prepare for your upcoming interviews um, and so uh, hopefully you know if you like this type of content please give me a like and subscribe and comment below if you have any sort of questions or any sort of suggestions in terms of what other topics I should cover in the future. All right, so now let's get started with the actual problem itself. Um, all right, so given that the table below um, uh, compute the correlation coefficient of x1 and x2 columns. So in this table, you see that there are some values here. x1 has some values and x2 has some values. Now we have to think about how we are going to actually solve this problem. Um, so um, a really good response when it comes to SQL is sort of like a sandwich method. So um, start by, first of all, just brainstorming out loud. You know, maybe pick, take about a minute or two, ask clarifying questions to the interviewer, um, and kind of brainstorm, you know, what's your initial thought process about how you're going to solve this. Um, and then spend a bulk of your time actually you know, taking a crack at the problem and explaining your thought process out loud. Um, and that's sort of important just because, you know, you don't just want to be this robot that just sort of gets a problem and then you just solve it without actually engaging the interviewer. Um, the more you engage the interviewer, the more points you're sort of earning, um, especially if, you know, given that uh, any of these technical exercises are not just about whether you can actually solve the problem or not, but also the interviewer is sort of looking for, you know, if you were an actual colleague that you're working with together, how would you actually, um, how, what kind of collaboration style would you provide, right? Uh, so try to be engaging, um, you know, to, to an extent. Now, the last part is after you have basically, you know, solved the problem, uh, from there, just like kind of summarize, you know, how you would actually like how this um, the script that you wrote would actually take the raw data and then manipulate it to get the output that you desire. Um, and if you don't end up doing that, sometimes the interviewer will actually ask you to do that. You know, can you take this raw table and kind of walk me through the procedure from the beginning to the end? Um, so those are the three step approach as a way to really provide a comprehensive um, SQL solution. All right, so now let's get started itself. And as I'm going through this, once again, this is somewhat of like a raw format. I'm kind of thinking this out loud. And, um, and this is really to demonstrate, you know, what it feels like to be in the shoes of a um, candidate, um, you know, as you're going through this problem, right? So, so let's kind of think about, you know, um, how um, I would go on about solving this. So first of all, you have to kind of think about, you know, what is correlation coefficient, right? So you have two variables and you want to see to what extent they are correlated to each other. Um, it's sort of like the analogy of beer and diaper sales of if, you know, when one is increasing, when diaper sales are increasing, um, it's, it's correlated with, um, you know, beer sales as well um, and vice versa. So you have these two columns and, um, you know, to what extent the uh, X1 and X2 are correlated to each other. And so we now have to think about, you know, what is a statistical formula for um, calculating this, um, uh, this function. And, and the formula for this, um, as I recall, is essentially, um, it's the covariance of X1, X2, divided by the, um, the standard deviation of x1, x1 times the standard deviation of x2. All right, so we have 
essentially establish what is the um, formula for the correlation coefficient. Now we have to um, kind of further break down, you know, how do we calculate the covariance and how do we calculate the standard deviation um, of a column. So covariance is essentially, um, it is the, um, it is essentially the, um, the average of the following, which is going to be x1 minus um, x1 mu times the x2 minus x2 mu. Uh, so this is the covariance formula. <laughs> Whoops, COVID. Um, and then the standard deviation, you know, that's fairly straightforward. So this is essentially the average of the um, x1 minus, and I'm going to put a parenthesis here, um, minus x1 mu. And then you take the power of this by two. And then this gives you the, uh, whoops, so this gives you the variance formula. And so the standard deviation formula is going to be the, um, the square root of this, um, this variance formula. So this is the, um, so these are all of the individual components of the correlation coefficient that we have to first of all calculate um, and then you know take that raw table, manipulate it, and then put them together and then eventually we end up with the final output which is the correlation coefficient. Um, now it's really important to kind of lay this out from the get go because if you don't really know what the formula is, um, then you're gonna have a, you're definitely gonna have a problem with this, um, you know, with you know with this question. So make sure you do kind of, re, you know, make sure you review the basic statistical concepts and also, um, you know, if 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 it's not something that you readily know, one thing you could potentially do is um, ask the interviewer um, to see whether you can Google search it or per perhaps get a hint in terms of what the formula is. And sometimes the interviewer is gonna allow you to do that. Um, so make sure you, you know, just kind of pulse check with the interviewer uh, and then see, you know, what kind of information you could get. All right, so now that we have the formula, um, so now let's think about how we're going to actually solve this problem step by step. So, uh, so right off the bat, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I should definitely use width clauses, a series of width clauses just because you know, um, I have all these various functions I need to be able to calculate separately and then put them together. Now the common denominator across all of these is that I need what, I need a mean. I need a mean in order to calculate the covariance. I need a mean in order to calculate the variance and the standard deviation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by calculating what the mean are for both the X1 and X2. <coughs> all right, so. I'll start with with clause mean as so calculate the mean select x1 x2 average x1 over as mean x1 and <clears throat> um, gonna do the same thing for the x2 column and this is from the table all right so why did I instead of just doing a group by average why did I calculate average over clause um, so for those who are not too familiar with, you know, what the over clause does, uh, so over clause, what this would do is essentially calculate the X1 and um, it will take what is the average of the entire um, column here. Um, uh, and let's just say arbitrarily, you know, let's just say that the, entire, the average of this entire column here is let's just say, you know, 5.0, okay? So it's going to actually repeat the 5.0 uh, across all of the rows 
with this given column. And we want to preserve this instead of just collapsing it to a single mean just because, um, because keep in mind that when we're calculating, <coughs> when we're calculating the variance, we have to be able to take the individual value of the x1 and subtract it by the mean. So it makes perfect sense to preserve this um, row by row um, so that in the next step, we can go ahead and calculate the variance. So now this is the next phase of the width clause. And Gonna go ahead and calculate the variance here. So calculate the variance. And I'll just select and I'll take the um, average of this power uh, x1 mean x1 2 as variance of x1. Um, just to kind of repeat you know what i'm getting at here so um so this x1 minus uh mean of x1 um you know that's some of self-explanatory right so basically this is the part that i'm trying to calculate here um and then this power of two this is basically you know this part where i take the difference of the two and then i square it um and then i need to be able to take the average of this um of you know of, of these uh these square differences um as a way to calculate the variance of x1 and now i need to do the same thing for x2 as well so this is going to be x2 minus mean x2 and this is from the mean by the way yeah all right so now that we have the variance the next logical thing to do is standard deviation. And we definitely need the standard deviation of x1 and x2 because that's what the correlation coefficient requires in the denominator. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate the standard deviation. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and just call it um, STD dev. So calculate the STD dev. And um, so this is fairly straightforward. So we already know what the variance is. And all we need to do is just apply this power function. Um, and then in the second argument, just replace this with 0.5, replace this with variance x1. And that's just going to square root the current variance. And I'm going to call this um, STD x1. And then just replace the x one with x2 to get the standard deviation for uh, the x2 value. And this is going to be called a from uh, variance. Yep. All right. So we're not too far away from actually completing this. So now we have the denominator. Now we need to get the numerator. We need to get the covariance. All right, so how do we get the covariance? Um, well, it's actually it's very straightforward. I mean, all we need to do is just covariance as. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate the covariance here. So select the, um, in order to calculate the covariance, what we need to do is just take the average of uh, x1 minus the um, mean x1 times the x2 minus mean x2. And then we'll call this the covariance of x1, x2. And this is going to come from this mean table, mean. And now we have the standard deviations and we have the covariance. Now we can put these two pieces together and calculate the co uh, correlation coefficient. All right, so the final step is calculate the correlation coefficient. And so this is going to be select. Um, we already have the covariance here. So covariance of X1, X2 divided by the 
um, the multiplication of the standard deviation of x1 times the standard deviation of x2. Um, and I apologize for the lighting issue. Um, I get, I think my um, light box battery just you know, ran out. That's why it's sort of dark all of a sudden. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with the video anyways. All right, so, uh, so you go ahead and calculate this and this is going to be the correlation of x1, x2. Um, and, um, and where do I, and, and I need to be able to get the covariance from, um, from this covariance table. table. Uh, so I'll we'll call it the covariance. And I need to get the standard deviations from the standard deviation um, temporary table. So I'll call this STD dev. So I'm using, I'm essentially using um, cross join as a way to get the covariance um, from this covariance uh, temporary table and standard deviations from this uh, standard deviation table. So all in all, this is going to calculate the correlation coefficient um, of the X1 and X2. Um, so if I had to just basically repeat the process of this, you know, first of all, I'll just explain that you know, this, these are the functions that you need to have in order to calculate the correlation coefficient. And then you're going to individually try to calculate this um, using a series of width clauses. So I'll basically explain, you know, how I would go on about, you know, uh, get, getting the mean by demonstrating what the values look like in this um, table, in the problem set. Um, I'll talk about how to calculate the variance and how the variance can be used to calculate the standard deviation um, and then eventually the covariance. And so when you put together the covariance divided by the standard deviations, that's gonna give you the correlation coefficient. So I, I hope you, um, you know, like this type of style of video. Um, you know, so basically this is the type of problem that you might often encounter um, whenever you're, you have these product data science interviews. Um, specifically in the SQL round. They're not just simply, you know, take these two tables and do jo some joins. You're, you're, sometimes you're going to be asked these type of problems where they ask you um, a problem based on like a statistical concept. You know, for instance, like, can you take um, a table and then try, <coughs> excuse me, try to calculate the cross validation of something or calculate the variance or correlation coefficient. So these are additional type of exercises you could definitely do. Um, and I just wanna let you know that this is um, also like a preview of the future um, course that's gonna be launched on datainterview.com. I intend on releasing product SQL um, problem set along with lessons <coughs> that can be really helpful for you um, as you're doing the <laughs> preparation. All right, and truly sorry for the coughs. Uh, it's just it's just been nonstop, you know, for me. <coughs> but but hope you like this video. Uh, definitely give me a like, uh, subscribe, and comment below if you have any other questions. And I'll see you in the next video uh, very soon. All right, thank you. Bye.